All right, so we're going to talk about frequency tables. Uh, the yes. chapter that this comes out of, like I said, this isn't coming from our book, but the, from the material it came from is 13.2, so I'm going to call it 13.2. Helps me to keep track of it if I number it. So we're going to talk about frequency tables. So we'll learn a little bit of new vocabulary and just a, a, we've worked with frequency tables already. We just didn't call them frequency tables. So let's talk about what a frequency table is. Come up with a definition. So first off, if we're talking about frequency, what 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 is frequency? Mean? How many times? How often? What's another way we could say frequency? How many times? How often? How much? So frequency, we're just counting counting how many things. So frequency table is just a way of listing the number how how often or how many times something happens. And on that first day when we played the game with the dice and putting the cubes on the numbers, what we did on that first on that first side of the sheet when we counted how many twos we rolled, when we counted how many threes we rolled, and we put a little mark each time we rolled one, what we were doing there was making a frequency table. We counted how many times we rolled each number. So that's that's what that first chart was that we made was a frequency table. We just didn't call it a frequency table that day. That day. So we're just counting up how many times something happened. So frequency tables are a way of listing experimental probability. So we, we're, we're measuring, we're doing an experiment, we're counting something, and we're just in a table, we're just listing what we've counted, how many times this happened, how many times the other thing happened. With our dice, we counted how many times a two happened, a three happened, and so on. So that was a frequency table. And what we want to do Part, one of the things that we do with a frequency table is we find what we call relative frequency. And relative frequency is just another way of saying the experimental probability of an event. And in this case, the event is in our table. So our frequency table is going to list our, our, the number of times something happens. The relative frequency is just a way of finding the probability, the experimental probability of that thing happening. And remember that our experimental probability is favorable over the total. That's all we have to do to find our experimental probability. So the relative frequency is just listing the experimental probability of each category in our table, each thing that we're looking at. So it sounds more complicated than it really is. Is everybody good with, with our vocabulary? Frequency, we're just counting how many times something happens, putting it in a table. Relative frequency, we're finding the probability of that thing, the experimental probability of that event that we're interested in happening. All right, so let's look at an example. We did a survey on computers. How many computers do 
do houses have in them? I'm sorry? This is going to be an example of a frequency table, yes. So we're going to put our data in a frequency table. Now we did our survey of 80 households. So we either called on the phone or we went door to door and said, how many computers do you have in your house? And we're going to put our, our uh, data in a frequency table. So in one column, we're going to put the number of computers. And in the second column, we're going to count how many houses it happened in. How often did, the, did a house have this many computers? So when we did our survey, we found that the number of houses that had zero computers was 12. So 12 houses in our survey had no computers in their house. The number of houses that had one computer was 29. The number that had two was 31. The number that had three was six. And the number that had more than three was two. So we didn't count how many more than three, we just said they had more than three. So this is how this is how many times each category happened. Twelve houses had no computers, twenty-nine houses had one, and so on. If we add 12, 29, 31, 6, and 2, we get all 80 houses that we counted. So this is our frequency table. That's all we're talking about when we're talking about a frequency table. Our total frequency is just the total number of things that we counted. Our total frequency is 80 because we counted 80 houses. That's our total in our, when we start calculating probabilities, that's going to be our total. So our total frequency that's just how many we counted. Total frequency is 80. And that's just all, all added together. 12 plus 29 plus 31 plus 6 plus 2. All the houses that we count. Now let's calculate the relative frequency that a house had two computers. So we're going to calculate the relative frequency of two computers. So we're going to do favorable over total. So for two computers, what's our what's our favorable number? What how many how many houses have two computers? 31. And what's our total? How many we counted? 80. So our relative frequency of two computers is 31 divided by 80, which if I put it in my calculator, it's about 0.39 or 39%. So based on our survey, about 39% of houses had two computers. 
And that's all there is to finding, to doing our frequency and finding relative frequency. Relative frequency just means what is the experimental probability that we have a particular outcome. In this case, we were interested in an outcome of two computers in the house. 31 times we counted that out of 80 total. That's all there is to it. Questions on this example, our relative frequency and how we did our frequency. All right, there's one other thing that we're interested in with frequency tables. And that's called a probability distribution. Probability distribution is just a fancy way of saying the experimental probability for each category. So, for what we did on our last example, we found the relative frequency of one category of two computers for a probability distribution. We do that same calculation for each category and list the probability. So we're just doing this, the, the example that we just did. We calculate the experimental probability for not just one category, but for each category in our frequency table. So we're just repeating what we, what we already did. Probability distribution is a fancy way of saying what's a probability for each category. And remember that our frequency tables, the probability that we're looking at here is an experimental probability because we're counting something, we're measuring something, we surveyed something, so that's it's a, an experimental probability. So let's look at an example of coming up with a probability distribution. So this time we're interested in a community college. We want to know the age of the new students at, at the community college. We want to know how what the probability distribution of their ages are. And our data, our data tells us that we have 26 under 18. We have 395 between, between 18 and 22. We have 253 between between 23 and 27. A hundred and thirty-nine between 28 and 32 and 187 over 32. <clears throat> so there's our data. So let's, for our first step, let's put this data into a frequency table. If we put it into a table, it's a little easier to work with. So I'm going to make a frequency table.
A lot of our, our problems that we have, the frequency table will already be made for us, so it's kind of nice. But here, because we just have the data listed out, we'll, we'll make a frequency table. So I'm going to make my first column the age of the student. And the second is how many? And I'm just going to go for my data and turn this into a into our frequency table. So under 18, under 18 is 26. 18 to 22 is 253. 23 to 27 is 95. oops I missed I put the wrong number here this should be 395 395 between 18 and 22 253 between 23 and 27 28 to 32 is 139 and over 32 is 187 <clears throat> and our probability distribution we're going to make a probability distribution from the frequency table so our sec second step is probability distribution Did I spell that right? Prob, no. Prob, uh, there we go. Probability, there we go. So we're going to calculate the probability for each category. So we need a couple of things for our probability. What is our total? What's our total frequency? How do we figure that out? Add them. So what are we adding? 26. Right, right. So our total is all the students that we counted. The total is 26 plus 395. We just add all the students that we counted. Plus 395 plus 253, plus 139, plus 187. And the problem is really nice because that turns out to be 1,000. So we counted 1,000 students. In our survey to figure out the probability distribution, they surveyed, we counted 1,000 people. So now we just need to find the probability for each category. The favorable for each category is how many students are in the category. And the total is 1,000 for each category. You do it for each category. So that's the, that's a downside probability distribution is you have to do the cal calculation for each category. So I'll put a new column here in our, for our probability. And I'm going to abbreviate there, and I'll un underline that. So for our probability distribution, for this one, I get 26 over 1,000, which equals um, 0 0.026. And remember to go from a decimal to a percent multiply by 100. So this is about 2.6%. For this category, I get 395 over 1,000, which equals 0.395. And as a percent, 39.5.
So 39.5% of the students are between 18 and 22. Next category, 253 over 1,000. If I divide that out, I get 0.253. And as a percent, multiply by 100, I get 25.3%. So about 25% of students are between 23 and 27. Next category, same thing. 139 divided by 1,000 equals 0.139, which is about 13.9%. So about 13.9% of students are between 28 and 32. And finally, for my final category, 187 over 1,000 is 0.187. And that's 18.7%. So that's my probability distribution. Now here's a question for you. If I add all the probabilities in my probability distribution, what do I have to get? One hundred percent. We looked at the ages. So this is all the students under 18, so that's zero to 18. And our last category is over 32, so that's 32 to uh, in the grave, I guess. So isn't that every possible age? So if we add up the probabilities of every possible age that could be at the college, we have to get 100%. So when you add the probabilities in a probability distribution, they have to add up to 100%. Because we're counting everything that we counted. The probability distribution tells us the probability of getting everything that we counted. So when in a probability distribution, your probability has to add to 100%. When you, when you figure out the probability. So that's a way to, uh, to double check yourself and it's also an important thing to know that to make sure you haven't left anything out. So all of these are going to add up to 100%. And if you do, in your homework, if it comes out to like 99.8, that's essentially 100%. So you've done it right. Questions on frequency tables and probability distribution? Pretty not not complicated stuff. We're, we're, we're starting out, probability is kind of nice in that we're counting, we're dividing. It should be pretty good. So the frequency table tells us how often something happens, something that we're interested in. The relative frequency is just the experimental probability of that category. And the probability distribution is the probability of each category in our table. Are we good? Okay.